welcome to my channel. My name is Kaylee May, and this is hopefully the first book in a very long series called Kaylee May's Book Club. But today we're going to be reviewing The Virgin Suicides, which I actually thought was a very interesting read. I have personally never seen the movie, and I honestly just saw the cute book cover and was like, hey, I heard that they made a movie out of this. The book, the book must be pretty decent if they made a movie out of it, right? That was at least my thought process. But it was a surprising, interesting read with lots of commentary on girlhood, womanhood, and just the way that boys and girls are socialized differently in society and the impacts that, that can have on young girls. Obviously, trigger warning for mentions of suicide, um, but I will say I think that this book has a really strong theme of just overall young girls having their lights snuffed out before they've even had a chance to live. Warning, this video will contain spoilers, so if you're planning on reading The Virgin Suicides and you haven't yet and you really don't want spoilers, like stop right now, bookmark this video and come back to it once you're done because I will be talking about the things that this happened. But to give a short premise to maybe anyone who hasn't read the book or maybe hasn't read the book in a long time, the book follows the five Lisbon sisters and they all live within this small suburban town um, where they seem to have this aura of mystique. And I can't tell if it's just because they're all sisters and people are like, oh my goodness, and one of them is super hot, which really catches the attention of a lot of boys in this town. So I thought this book was really interesting because it views and discusses girlhood through the lens of boys, specifically this one group of boys that lives in the very same neighborhood on the very same street as the Lisbon girls. The narrator and his group of friends almost talked about the girls as if they were aliens, these otherworldly beings so different from themselves that they could never possibly be understood. And I honestly thought this was pretty interesting because I think this has a lot to do with the way that boys and girls are socialized growing up. It's always boys do this, girls do this, and they are brought up in a way that is, there's a clear line between what a girl should do and what a boy should do. Girls will play with dolls, boys will play with cars. Girls will wear pretty cute things, boys will go out and play in the mud. And of course this is a very obvious effect of the patriarchy of socializing boys and girls very differently so that they grow up to be perfect men and women and play their respective roles in society. However, I do think this causes a very strong divide and I think that we, if we all look back to our childhood, unless you were blessed to be raised by amazing angels, I think that we can all look back to our childhood and think of what it was like to be raised as a girl or as a boy. I feel like growing up, I always wanted to do things that felt like they were only for boys. And I remember I went through this huge tomboy phase where I rejected all femininity in an attempt to be more tomboyish. I would wear like knuckle gloves and only play handball. And I don't know, I think that when you're a child, it seems like there are two categories to put yourself in boy or girl and obviously you can blur those lines via becoming a tomboy but i don't know if there's really the same kind of equivalent for a tomboy as there is so because young boys and young girls are socialized so differently and they recognize the way that they are socialized differently they recognize the way that boys are treated differently than girls especially as kids they don't necessarily know this difference but nonetheless they internalize it and as they grow older and into their teenage years they really start to fit into their societal patriarchal role of girl and boy However, I do think that this viewing of these young boys and the Lisbon girls, viewing them as an other, viewing them as almost an alien, as I said before, really serves to isolate them. The boys treat them as almost they are these beings that are never going to be understood. And I think that this really makes the girls feel very isolated because at the end of the day, they're kids just like the boys are and they want friendship and they want belonging in their community. However, they seem to be isolated and shoved aside. This treating them as if they are different or some kind of other only serves to further isolate the girls and makes them wonder, am I weird? Am I so different that I can never possibly be understood? And I think a lot of young girls can really relate to this. As far as the teasing that comes with young boys to young girls, and again, I think this has a lot to do with, oh, if he's just being mean to you, it's because he has a crush on you. And I definitely think young girls can be can be guilty of doing this to young boys as well, as far as treating them as if they have cooties or there is others, but I think that there is really this exemplification of this within the virgin suicides that worsens almost as teens because I would like to think that most young girls grow out of viewing boys as having cooties but it almost seems to worsen as as young boys grow into teen boys. The narrator and the group of boys that they're in almost seem to be weirdly obsessed with these girls and they would pay attention to every single detail about them and I remember thinking that was interesting as I was reading it. Why are they noticing everything the, that these girls say, wear, how they do their hair? And I couldn't help but feel a little uncomfortable by it because 
these are just girls they're just people at the end of the day why are their every moves being watched is it because they are a girl is it because they are worth watching or is it because they are worth understanding these boys would pay so much attention to the girls, noticing every single detail about them, yet never really seem to approach them and actually try to talk to them. I think this further deciphering of every little thing that they did also made the girls even more alien in these boys' minds. And sure, this could be blamed on maybe the youth and adolescence of being a teenager, but when I think back to being a teenager, I would usually try to talk to my crushes. Wouldn't you? Like, what's the point of admiring from afar? And their watchfulness of everything that the girls do. It's hard to tell what the girls can tell how much they're being watched, but I would like to think that they are aware of how much everybody else seems to be paying attention to them. And that is what causes them into this little group of just the five sisters. Because it seems as if everyone except for themselves is in on this inside joke of who are these girls? Why are they so weird? Like, what, what is up with their house? And of course, that's gonna make anyone feel isolated and alone. And why would you wanna be friends with anyone that is very obviously whispering about you constantly behind your back? Even if they aren't saying negative things, I think that this also pushes to isolate the girls even further. One thing that I thought was interesting that despite this book being called Virgin Suicides, it focuses on one sister far more than it discusses any of the others, and it's Lux. Lux Lisbon is known to be the promiscuous sister. She is known to be the most conventionally attractive out of all of them, and especially the most conventionally attractive, I believe, in their whole school. She was nominated as homecoming queen on her one night out. and. I just thought it was so interesting the way that the boys are extra watchful of this girl. Of course, because she's attractive, she is given more attention than the other sisters. The boys pay more attention to her, they talk to her more. And the way that she's discussed in the book is so interesting because it is through, it is again through the lens of these boys, through one boy in particular, despite the fact we do not know what his name is. And discusses a lot about her sexual escapades and how she would sneak around school, hooking up with boys, whispering sweet nothings in their ear, and as the book goes on later on, later turns to having full-on intercourse on the roof of her parents' house. And of course this follows the death of one of her sisters, the first sister to die. She starts having sex with random people sometimes fully grown men. This girl is 14 years old and she would be sneaking married men into her home onto the roof to have sex with her. And I did think it was a little weird how the book exclusively focused on her actions and didn't want to think about why are these fully grown married men having sex with a 14 year old girl on the roof of her parents house. But I'll put that to the times in which the book was written. The book does also discuss other boys losing their virginities to older women at the time. But I will say, I do think that the narrator, and maybe this is because the narrator is a young boy at the time, it's almost spun as her decision. Her decision that she made as her coping mechanism. And it very likely is her coping mechanism for the way that she tragically lost her sister. But I do think it's interesting commentary on the way that conventionally attractive girls seem to have access to more coping mechanisms than maybe their counterparts. I think all of us have gone through a period in our life where we feel isolated, where we feel alone, as if no one understands us and no one will understand us. But I think that girls will often turn to promiscuity as an attempt to feel like less alone, and it's so much easier for them to achieve than maybe boys or their less attractive counterparts. Lux uses sex and male attention as a way to fill the void within her own heart that was left after her sister died. And the narrator almost portrays this as sort of her own decision, but you can see from very on earlier in the book, especially as it discusses flashbacks, that she was constantly sexualized. Because of her conventional attractiveness, she would be given more attention, people would be making comments on her, and it was very obvious that she was sexualized basically as soon as she started coming into womanhood and really growing into her features. I think attractive girls often fall down this hole very easily. Of They start to feel alone, but they have these people that are willing to give them attention. And even though these people are not giving them attention in the right way, and maybe I should specify, these men and boys are not giving them the attention in the right way that they need, it's still attention, and it still is something to help fill the void. And so I think that attractive girls are very often f fallen victim because they feel alone and they look around and it seems like they have people that are willing to be there for them. However, these people are not there for the right reasons, obviously, and Lux knows this within her heart too, that these boys and men that she's hooking up with and getting intimate with, they aren't really doing what she's hoping that they will do, which is to distract her from her own internal sadness.
But nonetheless, it feels good to feel wanted, to feel needed almost. Some of these boys would be pawing at her, telling her how, she, how beautiful she is, and who wouldn't feel good in that situation? But as the book says, she would very often be drawn out of these situations, very often staring off into space in the middle of intercourse with these boys. But they wouldn't care. They were still getting what they wanted, a hookup with the mysterious and attractive Lux. And she was left at the end feeling still empty. She was putting a band-aid on a deep wound. She was trying to soothe her feeling of emptiness and isolation with attention, but not the right kind of attention. And so my heart breaks for the Lux Lisbons of the world, the pretty girls who grow into their features too young and were taken advantage of before they even knew what was going on. Because at the end of the day, Lux is a victim. She was 14 years old while these grown men were having sex with her on the roof of her house. And sure, maybe she was an active player in this, but if you're sneaking into a girl's house with her parents, we can't act like these men weren't at fault at all. And just because somebody decides to be self-destructive doesn't mean that they are fully to blame for their actions. And I just mourn for all the other girls who have used sex and promiscuity as a means to feel less empty because at the end of the day, you're pouring water into a cup with a hole at the bottom. It's never gonna be enough and it, physical intimacy will never be a match for true intimacy. For tr and whether that intimacy be obtained through friendship or a romantic relationship, sometimes it's easy. Having mindless sex is easy. If you feel wanted in that very moment, but as any girl knows, sometimes afterwards the wanting goes away and you're left with nothing. And sometimes after having something in that moment and being left with nothing, that's worse than never having that wanting at all. Because then you realize that the wanting that they were holding wasn't what you hoped. Mr. and Mrs. Lisbon are also heavily controlling of their daughters. Mrs. Lisbon is known to be very controlling of what the girls wear. The girls will go out and buy a dress and she will make it wider, make the neckline higher, make the dress longer. I don't even know, doing all kind of crazy magic with her sewing machine. But I did think it was interesting in that it was good commentary on the way that parents are often more controlling of their daughters than they would be to their sons. Obviously we don't know because the Lisbons didn't have any sons, but it is very obvious in the way that they are controlling to their daughters and the way that they wear, the way that they aren't allowed to go on any dates or do anything. Parents are often over controlling of their daughters in the name of protecting them, but usually just end up snuffing out their daughter's light, quite literally in the case of this book. Why is it so wrong for young girls to be as wild and carefree and reckless as young boys are? The boys in this book seem to have almost endless freedom, with Lux's counterpart, Trip, being able to have sex with girls in his own bed almost every day, it seems. And I think it's really interesting commentary on the way that young girls are treated so differently from young boys, almost as if young girls are being punished. The Lisbon girls were often made to wear baggy clothes, couldn't go on dates, couldn't go to parties, couldn't have parties. And at the end of the book, they were eventually pulled out of school to be homeschooled because the parents were worried about the effects that going to school was having on them after their sister's suicide. And sometimes this just makes me think of the way that I was treated growing up and especially how I was treated in comparison to my brother. I feel like my parents were often stricter on me and it was, oh, it's because you're a girl. We just care about your safety. But why should young girls be punished for the way that the world treats them. It's not their fault, and I think it also calls into the way that parents can play a factor in isolating their own kids. The Lisbon girls very clearly wanted more freedom and very likely would have been happier, and there is actually a part in the book where the family started to go to therapy, but the mom pulled them out because the therapist started to blame her. And I think it was very interesting because so many parents are so unwilling to see that the ways that they try to protect their children oftentimes can end up causing more harm than if they would have trusted their children to make choices. Because at the end of the day, children are still human beings. And despite the fact that they may not have the most life experience, they're still capable of making some choices for themselves. And so young girls shouldn't be treated as prisoners in their own home just because something bad could happen to them. Because the reality is something bad could happen to young boys as well. However, we trust them to be able to protect themselves and there needs to be more of a discussion rather than controlling girls because something bad could happen to them. How about teach your sons not to do bad things to young girls? How about worry and care for your sons in the same way that you may worry and care for your daughters? 
And while sure, maybe you can have loose guidelines of what is okay for your kids to wear, forcing them to constantly wear baggy clothes is not okay. I feel like young girls should be able to express themselves through what they wear, and at the end of the day, fashion is a big part of teen girl culture. I'll never forget wanting to wear tops that I thought were so cute that my parents then were like, oh, that top is inappropriate. And as a young kid, it's so confusing because it's like, or what's so inappropriate about my body? And it creates a lot of shame, I think, in young girls, especially as far as when people are telling them, oh, you shouldn't wear that, like someone's gonna be looking at you inappropriately because nine times out of 10, when a young girl is putting on a top, it's because they feel cute in it. They're not trying to attract that kind of attention. And by you telling them that they're gonna attract that kind of attention, it makes them feel a certain way. I remember growing up and being like, is there something wrong with my body? Why is it not okay? Why is it so bad to wear a tight fitted shirt? I mean, I wasn't wearing anything intentionally provocative. Even a tank top was sometimes being made to seen as inappropriate. And I think we can all think back to school dress codes and how strict they could be. What's so inherently sexual about my 14 year old thighs? The human body is not inherently sexual. Unfortunately, we live in a society, especially with porn being so mainstream, I definitely think that this sexualized the naked human body more so than it's ever been sexualized because, let's face it, a decent chunk of this population watches porn on a regular basis, and because of this, every time they see a naked body, it's almost always in a sexual context. And so when they go out into the real world and are confronted with bodies in the real world, they can't help but feel uncomfortable by it, as if they shouldn't be seeing it because it's sexual. But the reality is, our bodies serve an important function, and wearing clothes is most oftentimes just a fun way to express yourself. Not everything about the female body is inherently sexual, and this constant sexualization that young girls are taught that they have to reckon with, it's not fair to put that responsibility on them. It's not fair to put their responsibility on, don't wear that tank top because someone might look at you the wrong way. How about if you see someone looking at your daughter the wrong way, you say something to them about it? Or just teach your children as they're growing up that their body does so much work for them and they should love and appreciate their body and that there is nothing shameful about it, that they should not have to hide it because of the way that other people think. I think that we should be challenging those people who look at young girls in tank tops and immediately jump to sexual thoughts because let's be real, they're the weird ones here, not the young girls wearing tank tops. So overall, I think that this book was a really interesting view on girlhood and all the struggles that girl, that young girls often face. Whether that's feeling constantly watched by the boys that they're around, maybe having to even put on a performance, whether that be during sex or in other aspect of their lives. The Lisbon girls were truly alone and that is ultimately why they decided to end their own lives. They didn't feel seen. They didn't feel as if their lives or their voices mattered because their parents made that clear. They were making harsh decisions and strong boundaries that despite the Lisbon girls' protests, they would fall on deaf ears every time. And so I really urge parents out there, and I, this is something that I really hope to do when I'm a future parent one day, is listen to your kids, listen to your teens, trust them enough to give them some freedom with their life, okay? Of course, every pa parent is going to want to instill boundaries and discipline in their kids, but you cannot be controlling every aspect of their lives. It's going to make these kids feel as if their voices, their lives do not matter. And I think this book does a really good job of showing how when girls or any children are not listened to, their opinions are not taken into consideration, and they are so strictly isolated and controlled that sometimes death almost seems an escape because there's almost an aspect of freedom in death. At least after death, I have the freedom to do whatever, to be nothing, to go to heaven. We know that these girls are Catholic, so I imagine that they believe in some kind of heaven-hell system, but it can't possibly be worse than their life is currently. And especially for all the young girls out there who may feel trapped in a cage as these Lisbon girls did, maybe have patience. Honestly, it took me moving out of my home to really get the freedom that allowed me to blossom into my true and fullest self, but I do hope that one day when I'm a parent that I can create the space for my kids to let them fully blossom, to protect them but not control them, and allow them to explore the world, to make mistakes, to scratch up their knees and be goofy and express themselves through the clothes that they wear. You know, I think that a lot of parents have good intentions when they try to bring up their kids with all these rules, but at the end of the day, you're making your house a prison, and sometimes children will do anything to break out of that prison. 
Well, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate everyone. This was my first video doing something like this, and honestly, I didn't really write a script. I just kind of had notes from when I read the book, and I would really appreciate any kind of feedback, whether that be diving maybe more into my own personal experiences, not talking about my personal experiences at all in the way that they relate to the book, maybe exploring the theme some more. I will say I did not read any reviews or critiques or analysis of this book. This video was purely based off of my own opinions and thoughts as I was reading it, and and I would like to continue that in the future, or maybe we can have some kind of debate, discussion, I don't know. Nonetheless, though, I appreciate any feedback that you can. I hope to really make this a more consistent series and hopefully make a video for every book that I read. Um, so yeah, if you did enjoy, please like and subscribe, though. Um, any support and feedback is, of course, appreciated. Um, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!